Hello again folks, in tonight's video I'm going to be doing another kit build for you, in this case it's this small LED sand timer or egg timer kit, it um, looks like quite a simple kit and uh, it should be fairly quick to build. Now I am filming this on my new mobile phone tonight, this is my Galaxy S8 Plus and from initial tests it does appear that the camera is a little bit better in terms of autofocus as you will know it doesn't matter where the object is the camera does seem to focus quite well and indeed when I zoom in you will note that the video isn't quite as, as noisy as it has been previously so that should hopefully make for some better videos um, well, in terms of image quality, maybe not content, but never mind, <laughs> you get the meaning. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and build it. So in terms of components, not a lot really. There is quite a high component count. I think there's 50 odd LEDs in here. Um, let's see, we see, 57 LEDs. We've got uh, an STC15W201S, that's our microcontroller. Um, S1 single pole double throw switch. We've got a PCB. Um, I think that's a 1.2 millimeter DC uh, DC jack. We've got a four pole four position header pin. Uh, six by six millimeter switch, and interestingly, a 330 nano farad ceramic capacitor. Now I have checked uh, the PCB. There are no. Uh, there's no silk screen for a capacitor and indeed I've checked various other kits, uh, you know, similar kits online and none of the photos show the capacitor uh, installed on the board and it, I don't know why, maybe it's just uh, because somebody's manufactured it and put it on in error and basically somebody's copied them but basically every one of these kits shows a 330 nanofarad uh, capacitor but there's no provision for it on the kit anywhere so a little bit of a strange one so we'll pop that to one side so yeah here's my PCB again nice uh, nice quality uh, PCB uh, 57 LEDs like I say uh, controller there's our header pins there the switch uh, sorry a little tactile switch we've got uh, a slide switch for the power uh, DC jack and also um, provision here to use a, an old USB cable to power it, so 5 volts. Um, so probably what I'll do is uh, just tack on a couple of leads onto there and uh, we'll test it that way. So I think what I'll do initially, um, I won't bore you with me soldering 57 LEDs in. I will just, um, you know, pop them all on and get these, get these soldered up. And then we'll come back and put the, the other interesting components on, if you want to call them interesting. Um, so I'll do that now, and I'll catch you in probably, I'm going to say, around 5 or 10 minutes. So, if you bear with me, I'll see you in a second. Right, welcome back. Right, that's most of the LEDs in and uh, the socket there for the uh, microcontroller. Um, I just thought I'd show you the... LEDs though the pitch of this uh, the pitch of the LEDs and the pitch of the board are slightly different the uh, The board slightly narrower and what that means is that the LEDs go in quite snugly and uh, Just hold themselves in place which makes it really easy to assemble um, I have found however that these LEDs may be slightly dirty because um, They're quite difficult to get a good quality solder joint on the rear of the board, um, I found that it's almost like repelling the solder, even with some additional flux. Um, so I don't know why that is. Never come across that before, um, but it is going together reasonably well. So I'll just um, keep the camera rolling. We do have three extra LEDs, which is always nice to check in the parts box. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and finish soldering this up now. Let's check out the zoom on this new camera and see if um, it's any better than usual. So this will be the last video um, from my current location. I've actually, in the process of moving house, indeed the workshop is the last thing to go. Of course, that is the lowest priority on my wife's list. Um, but yeah, so 
um, as soon as I get the watch shop back up and running at the new location uh, try and get back into the swing of making regular videos it's been a bit sort of ad hoc recently which is something I, I wanted to sort of avoid but you know sometimes needs must so yeah so hopefully I'll, I'll get the majority of the watch shop um, moved over this weekend Not that it will matter because um, you only ever get to see this blue blue bench, don't you? So if I just try and get this to focus, you will see... I'm going to use one of these LEDs here. Um, okay, so there, if you just look on the, the longer lead there, the anode, you can see where it's a pulled up there. Almost a, it's like a half dry joint and there's quite a few of them. I'm reasonably content that, um, you know, I've got a good connection, but you can see the amount of flux that's on there as well. Just uh, not very pretty. Okay, so next thing we'll pop in is the tactile switch. I think I've told you before, um, these gen generally have, <clears throat> excuse me, formed leads and hold themselves into the board as well, so... Much of the same as the LEDs have sort of held themselves in place. The switch tends to do that as well. So let's apply a little bit of pressure on there. That's better. And we'll put this small power switch in now. Like so. Yeah, pretty much every component on this board has held itself in place, which is quite nice. Maybe when I move into the new watch shop, I'll, uh, I'll do a little watch shop tour. Um, I've had a few people ask me to do that before, but I'll be totally honest with you. Um, it's never been tidy enough to do so. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, of course, pop the details down below. or pop your comments down below and um, maybe I'll do it in the future. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just tack up these two pads for the USB lead. Um, I won't bother fitting a DC jack. Um, I've had a look, it doesn't look like it's switched on the, the PCB, so uh, just popping 5 volts on it should be just fine. Um, so yeah, if, if you don't need to put uh, components on a board, don't do it. So I've got a small DC jack and a 4 pin header here that we can stick in the parts box for future use. You know, if a kit has those parts missing or you just need one for another project, you know, you'll always have them there. So we'll just pop the microcontroller in now. And before you commit, just check that it looks like it's going to go in and then gently press down. And that, other than the power leads, is the kit uh, complete. So looking at here, um, the right hand side is going to yeah, I think that's the, the negative side. But if we look at the circuit diagram here, we can see that the ground um, is straight onto the DC jack and the positive side is switched uh, through here. So the left-hand side here is obviously the the uh, 5 volt positive because it's going to the switch. So we'll just tack these uh, leads on. But we use the other side because those look a bit ropey. There's one. And there's the other. Okay, so we're now ready to test. So as it's designed to work on USB, we'll just chuck 5 volts on it. 
up the bench supply and hopefully when we flip the switch something will happen oh yeah and there we go so the three LEDs in the middle are Sort of symbolizing the grains of sand um, falling through the you know the egg timer or sand timer and as each one extinguishes on the top it illuminates on the bottom what does the switch do then oh yeah so that just increases the speed so that's probably swamping out the camera but it is a uh, Nice little water blue LEDs, quite bright. And the kit's currently drawing, uh, what's about 200 milliamps? Uh, sorry, sorry, about 30 milliamps, my apologies. Yeah, so that's not too bad at all. How fast does it go? So yeah, it's drawing about 30, 30 milliamps, so that's no too bad at all, yeah. So there we have it, that's a little blue LED egg timer, sand timer, thingy-majig kit. Uh, this cost about uh, £1.40 off of eBay. If I can find one on eBay, I'll link to it in the description below. Um, but yeah, hopefully next time we'll have something a bit more interesting for you when I'm at my new location. Um, until uh, then, if you enjoyed this video, as always, please give me the thumbs up. If you didn't, please give me the thumbs down and give me a bit of constructive criticism or feedback, whatever you wish. And um, yeah, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, please click on my head down here and subscribe. Until next time, boys and girls, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and as always, all the best.